whether it's hair, ropes or appendages, if it is long and requires easy control, you need to use a curve. For that reason, it's quite important for us to know how to manipulate them easily. So in this video, I'll show you how we can smooth a curve in a procedural way. I'm gonna make a series of videos on curves, so if that's something you're interested in, subscribe and look forward for those. That said, let's get into it. Here I have a setup with a couple of pretty roughed up curves, two of them, well actually one curve object with uh, two splines in it. A common pitfall when prototyping is to work on a single spline. It's true that it's easier to only think of one spline, but when you apply your setup to a curve with more splines, it often breaks the geometry. So having at least two will allow us to catch any problems that arise in the process and not have to redo the work we've done. Okay, in this setup I have a resample curve node to set the resolution of the curve. This will come in use later. Right, here's the basic idea of smoothing a curve. We can use a set position node, plug the position field so we can manipulate it here, then to it we can add a blur attribute node. Now as we increase the iterations, the curve will smooth up. We can use the weight slider to decide how much of this smoothing we want. However, a few issues arise. Firstly, the ends of the curve get pulled inwards. That's just how this operation works. It uh, kinda averages the position values across uh, regions of the curve. We may want for the ends to stay still and only smooth in between. Another issue is, when I increase the weight slider, it's uh, very sensitive in the beginning. I barely move it and it has a lot of effect on the curve. We may want to do something about it so it's nicer to work with. Finally, probably the bigger issue, when we change the curve resolution, it also affects the shape. Ideally, we want the smoothness level to be independent from the number of points on the curve. The reason that happens is the blur operation works by setting the position of a certain point of the curve based on its neighboring points. That region is often called a kernel. Now that kernel might be, let's say, 5 points in each direction. It takes the average of their positions and applies it to the center point. And it will do that for each point on the curve. So if we have fewer points, that region will be a greater proportion of the whole curve and their positions might be vastly different from each other, affecting the average. But if we have a much denser curve, that region is smaller in scope and the points inside are going to be closer to each other, so the average among them is gonna have a smaller effect on the position. In practice, if we want to achieve the same level of smoothness, on a denser curve, we need to increase the iterations on the blur node. Our goal is to set this uh, automatically, based on the number of curve points. Here I have the finished node. We can set the smoothness level the amount slider. We have an option to keep the ends in place and no matter what the curve resolution is, it maintains its shape. If we look inside, it's not huge and complicated, but it's a bit tricky to figure out. So 
let's build it. We're gonna start with the same blur setup. First, let's address the weight slider sensitivity issue. The problem is, the blur effect is not linear, it has an exponential nature. In the beginning here it has a lot of effect and then it tapers off at the end. See a lot of movement here barely has any effect. So what we can do, let's uh, recreate this slider with a mix node from 0 to 1. And now this thing we can raise to a power. Because this is a 0 to 1 range, any power we raise it on, it still is going to be in that 0 to 1 range. So let's start by squaring it. Yep, I can already feel it's better, much less sensitive now. However, let's cube it. Yeah, this is the sort of control I am looking for. Now let's deal with the ends here. If instead of a single value here, we put some gradient along the curve, there is a zero at both ends and then one in the middle section here, we should be able to mask out the ends of the curve. So anytime you think of a gradient along the curve, you should think of the factor from the spline parameter node. This is 0 to 1 along the length of each spline. When we plug this into the weight, you'll notice this end gets smooth and pulled in, and this doesn't. So all we have to do, remember we need uh, this, is we can remap it with a float curve. This is what the factor looks like, 0 to 1. We need it to be 0 at both ends and 1 in the middle at 0.5. This is the mask. All we have to do is multiply it with our factor control here. And that's it. We have preserved the ends. Let's make an option for this. A switch node between this and the control without the mask. There we are. Let's group all these. I'll call it smooth curve. We want an input for the switch, preserve ends. Let's also have the weight factor. Now the final thing we need to address is the blur iterations here. You may notice I have a bunch of numbers here. Well, that's because I plotted for every resolution of the curve, that's the number of points on the curve, what level of iterations I need to achieve the same shape on the smooth curve starting at 1 for 10 points per curve. I was basically looking for patterns in these numbers and I won't bore you with the details. Essentially, this number here is the number of points squared and then multiplied by some scaling factor. For my case, that scaling factor was about uh, 48, meaning this number, for example, is uh, 200 squared which is gonna be very big, so divide it by 48 and you get 
roughly this number up to some margin of error. But that's very good because we can now easily set the iterations based on the number of points on our curve. We can get those with a domain size node. We are looking for a curve. Then we have the point count. However, it says we have 120 points, but we have resampled the curve at 60. Well, that's because we have two splines, 60 points each, 120. So to get the true number, we need to divide the point count by the number of splines. Technically, this gives us the average resolution of the splines, but it should be good enough for most cases. Two splines don't necessarily have equal points, but we can always use a resample curve to equalize the resolution among all splines on our curve. Then remember, we square this. Then we multiply to scale it down by some number. I'll put this for now. Let's plug this into the iterations. Now this number here is our smoothness level. The bigger it is, the smoother the curve will be. However, be careful because if we put a bigger value here, this thing uh, will explode. We'll be multiplying an already large number. So this has to be at most a uh, one. So here's what we're gonna do. Another multiply in here. Make this very small. Then in here we will plug an integer. And just to make sure this doesn't go beyond one, we can clamp this multiply. Now this will control how smooth the curve will get. Let's replace the integer with a group input. I'll make a new one. Integer type. Call it smoothness level. And because this is 0.001, which is 1 over 1000, set the range to be from 0 to 1000. And just like that, we've created a very useful curve smoothing node. The only thing we may want is to output this uh, selection of the set position so that uh, we can select uh, what parts will get the smooth effect. And there it is. You can now apply this to any curve you're working with. If you find this sort of stuff interesting, you can find this node setup and lots of others in my Patreon repository. Links are down below. Thanks to anyone for the support and I'll see you next time.